So we're going to be talking about the congruence supplements theorem as well as the congruent complements theorem, but we're going to start off by proving the congruent supplements theorem and then kind of discussing what it means and how that would relate to a congruent um, complements theorem. So here's the setup for the proof. Remember, once we prove a theorem, we are adding it to our reasons bank. So copy this down. Here's my statements, my givens. Okay, so let's begin the proof. So we are given that they're supplements. What does it mean to be supplements? Well, it means that their measures would add up to 180 degrees. So there's our statement two. And because we have the same reason, we can actually keep them both under number two. The measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals 180, and the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three equals 180 degrees. And we know this to be true because it is the definition of supple, I spelled this wrong, supplementary angles. Okay? Now, what you'll notice here is that you have these two equations, and both equations equal 180 degrees. So there is a commonality between them. There's an equality between them, I should say. So what we can do is we could use our substitution property as we've done before, and we are going to substitute in our expression of the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three equals 180 in for that 180 degrees. So this right here, is going to replace this, okay? These kind of get canceled out there. So statement three, measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three. And some of you might be catching on now. Um, we have this equation where in our equation we have the measure of angle two on each side. So there's that common um, value which we can then subtract out. Keep that prove statement in the front part of your brain here. We want to get the measure of angle, or we want to get angle two congruent to angle three. And if we want angle, I'm sorry, angle one. Angle one congruent to angle three. And if we're showing one is congruent to three, then we would need to show that the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle three. Well, we can get that here by subtracting out the measure of angle two. So that's going to be our next step. If we use the subtraction property of equality, by subtracting the measure of angle two from each side, that eliminates the measure of angle two, and we end up with the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle three. And again, our proof statement is the last statement, and our proof statement is the angles must be congruent, which we already have that. Using our definition of equal angles, angle one is congruent to angle three. Now some people say, what the heck did we just prove? I have no idea what the heck that means, right? Well, here is the congruent supplements theorem, and it might be helpful to also write this in your notebook. Um, the congruent supplements theorem actually has two parts to it, which really come in handy if you can understand this theorem and be able to apply it in proofs. It will shorten up your proofs tremendously. Remember these theorems, I like to call them little shortcuts, because once you prove them, you could use them. You can technically do a proof without using them. You would basically go through the proof we just did onto whatever proof you're doing. So what we can do is shorten our proof by using the congruent supplements theorem, which states if two angles are supplementary to the same angle or congruent angles, then they are congruent to each other. So what that means here is if you know angle one and angle two are supplementary, and then you also know that two and three are supplementary, you could use the congruent supplements theorem to say that one and three are supplementary. Not they're supplementary, we would use it, I'm sorry, to say that angle one and angle three are congruent, right here, that they are congruent. Now this also works if they are supplements to the same, or here's our same angle, or congruent angles. So something like that, if let's say, I don't know, we had these two different linear pairs, right? And let's call one, two, three, and four. So if you know that angle one is congruent to angle three, you can go about proving that two and four are congruent because these are linear pairs, so two and four are supplements to one and three, and then since 1 and 3 are congruent, 2 and 4 must be congruent because they're supplements to equal angles. 
okay? That is also a version of the congruence supplements theorem. Once we start practicing with these theorems, I think it'll make a little bit more sense, but definitely write this down, keep it handy. Similarly, there is a congruent complements theorem, okay? So we can look at the congruent complements theorem. I don't know why it's not working. So our congruent complements theorem basically says the same thing as our congruent supplements theorem, except we're talking about complements instead of supplements. So if two angles are complementary to the same or congruent angles, then they are congruent to each other. So in this example here, I have that angle 4 and angle 5 are complementary and that 6 and 5 are complementary. Well, think about it, if you can't see it you know, without the angle measures, think about putting some angle measures in there, right? So if you know that angle 4 is not 90 but 40 degrees, okay, and the 4 and 5 are complements, that means 5 is 50 degrees. But then you know that 6 and 5 are complements. So if 5 is 50 degrees, then 6 has to be 40 degrees. Therefore, 4 and 6 are congruent to each other. So you try to actually prove the congruent complements theorem. It's very similar to the congruent supplements theorem, except now you're using the definition of complementary angles instead of supplementary angles. So pause the video, do this in your notebook, and then check back when you're finished. So here's our solution to this proof.